So in this next flowchart, we're going to continue looking at this idea of life history, and we'll entitle the next flowchart Life History 2. But now what we're going to be doing is uh, putting some more, let's say, names to faces for these life history components that we talked about in our previous flowchart. There are essentially two extremes of life history strategies that we can focus on and sort of figure out in terms of how they play their roles in ecological landscapes. So there are two extremes of LH strategies, LH standing for life history, and the strategies that we mentioned previously. Those two strategies are as follows. What we notice in ecology is that we sometimes see what we call R selected species. These species, and I'm writing it S double P because there are many R selected species, are going to be those species that usually have traits for high population growth rates. So we'll say have traits for high population growth rates. And that high population growth rate um, is usually denoted simply by the letter R. Thus we have R selected species. So what do I mean by these traits? Simple traits that usually denote an R selected species could be like small body size. Small body size is one life history trait, let's say, that really, really shows that this is probably an R selected species. Why small body size? Well, usually this is um, right hand in hand with the idea that less energy is necessary for this organism to survive. In addition, things like early maturity meaning that early uh, reproductive age, reproductive capabilities are seen in R selected species. Usually we also have large broods in R selected species and a brood is simply a, a large amount of offspring we'll say. So over here we'll just uh, extend this knowledge and say this is lots of offspring. That's what a large brood simply means. So that's another trait that is seen in high population growth rates, R selected species. Um, in addition we also see little to no parameters parental care. Little to no parental care in these are selected species. And you should already be seeing, uh, especially these three right over here, the fact that these look very, very similar to that Semmelparis life history strategy. And it's exactly right. They are almost entirely directly related to that Semmelparis strategy that we mentioned before. It's just the extreme version. So there's little to no parental care, and there's also usually a short lifespan. That's another thing that the Semmelparis strategy taught us, that the adults usually don't live that long, or they have a low survival rate um, that we saw previously in our other flowchart. In addition to this R-selected species traits that we see, we can also look at the R-selected species. And remember, in population ecology, it's about the population, meaning the species that are, it has the potential to interbreed. But we also have to focus on the same place, same time concept of our definition. So that same place, same time concept comes up when we see that the environments of R-selected species are the following. They usually are quite, quite variable. They're not stable at all. They are usually rather temporary in their stability, if they have any. And they're also, again, of course, unpredictable. Things that we did see time and time again in this idea of, let's say, exponential growth. The exponential growth theory, the exponential growth model, goes hand in hand with the idea of an R-selected species. All of these things combine together to give us a usually a low probability, so we'll say low probability of long-term survival in these species, in these R-selected species. So there's a low probability of long-term survival because there's temporary environments, unpredictable environments, variable environments, with all of these uh, traits also influenced by this overall concept of an R-selected species. And finally, uh, I would remember the fact that R selected species are named such because they rapidly, that R in rapidly should really give this away, they rapidly produce lots of offspring. And because they rapidly produce lots of offspring, they have what we call a high rate, a high rate of reproduction. Thus, we would call this a high lowercase r value, a high per capita uh, rate of reproduction. That's something that we've established before. So that's a lowercase r right here, high r. And that's why they're called r selected species. On the other side of this extreme, so this is the r selected extreme, is what we call the k selected species. 
So this is the complete opposite side of the spectrum. And again, two P's, double P, because we're talking about many K selected species. In this situation, the population size is actually rather close to K most of the time. So we'll say pop size close to K, and remember K stands for the carrying capacity most of time. And carrying capacity is that sort of limit, that resistance that the environment places on a real logistic model of growth population. And thus, we usually reach K and we stay around K, thus we're usually a K-selected species. This, in addition, would mean that we have a relatively stable environment. A little bit of change here and there, of course, but most of the time, relatively speaking, we have a stable environment in our K-selected species. And also, in terms of our tendencies, in terms of our traits that we see in these species, there's a tendency for the following couple of things. Most of these K-selected species have a rather long lifespan. Why do they have a long lifespan? Well, that's because their environment is rather stable. Um, they also have rather slow development, and because they have slow development, that would mean that their life is probably a bit longer because the development takes longer. Again, another big thing that ecologists like to see is that this is a highly, highly competitive group of species that are K-selected because the resource limitation is definitely there because they have reached that carrying capacity, and because they've reached it, there's a constant competition between organisms. Again, we also see fancy things like defenses against predators in case selected species because, again, there's a long lifespan. And you're going to have a long lifespan if you have something like a defensive capability against a predator. You're not just going to die upon, let's say, predation. You have some sort of defense within you that's innate that thus classifies you as a K-selected species. Because you have slow development, because you have a long lifespan, that would mean that you usually have a low reproductive rate, so a low R, not a high R, thus we don't call this an R-selected, we call this K-selected. And finally, um, you also definitely have parental care because of all those combining, these components combined together really mean that parental care is definitely there. The final point I want to make about these two extremes is that though I've presented them as two separate entities, it's very important to understand the following uh, overarching concept, and I'm going to box it in on the bottom here, just so that we have a clear understanding that it's not in nature simply only R-selected and only K-selected. What we need to remember is that ecology is a bunch of interactions. There's a bunch of fluctuations. There's a bunch of change happening that we always want to study as a population ecologist. Thus, we group things as R and K just for our purposes of, let's say, easiness. But in reality, what we can state is the following. Most populations, and this is the populations that an ecologist studies, have both, okay, have both R and K selected, R and K selected characteristics that vary, okay? characteristics. When we say R and K selected characteristics, we mean these, the long lifespan, slow development, the little to no parental care, the short lifespan, all of these things as a conglomerate put together. Most populations have both R and K selected characteristics that vary under. So these characteristics themselves fluctuate, that vary under and again, living and non-living interactions show up constantly in ecology. One more time, that vary under a non-living component such as different environmental, ENV for environmental conditions. Box this in on the bottom somewhere. Make this very, very clear that it's not simply all species are either R or K, but rather species fluctuate between both and have moments of both because the environment itself on Earth fluctuates and goes from stable to not stable here and there. Thus, we have these two extremes as point of references, but don't assume that a species is only one or the other. Rather, there's a nice combination of both that ecologists like to study off of.